Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Lau and today I will be uh, talking about SwiftUI and accessibility. So a little about myself, I have a background in business analysis and education and prior to the pandemic I studied iOS development and I'm currently studying full stack web development. So here's a quick overview of this talk. First, I'll go over the importance of inclusive development, then go over the types of accessibility. After, I'll go into detail on how accessibility is handled with SwiftUI. And then I'll introduce a personal project that I built with SwiftUI that works with voiceover and voice control. Lastly, I'll share my learnings and challenges. So what is the significance of inclusive development? According to the World Bank, 1 billion people or 15% of the world's population has some type of disability. And according to the CDC, in the US it's about one in four people. Why is this uh, inclusive development significant? Disabilities can affect anyone and everyone. They can be temporary or long-term. Apple's human interface guidelines goes into detail on how to ensure your app is as inclusive as possible. And last but not least, empathy is key for software developers. We build apps to improve people's lives. So let's go over the types of disabilities. There is vision such as visual impairment and color blindness, hearing such as hearing impairment and partial hearing loss, cognitive, such as short-term memory and dyslexia, and mobility, such as difficulty interacting with the UI or holding the device. A visually impaired user might use the voiceover feature that Apple provides. It essentially reads aloud elements like text, buttons, and images. Uh, visually impaired users might have difficulty with certain UI designs. For instance, new morphism design has been popular recently and it uses subtle contrast. However, it's potentially difficult to distinguish uh, for those with vision impairments. In the image towards the left, uh, the white image, you can see a uh, new morphism design. And personally, I think it's pretty awesome, but the buttons are a bit hard to see. So we should be mindful not to sacrifice accessibility. Next, let's consider users who have dyslexia. If possible, it would be good to include larger font or even use something like Open Dyslexic, which is a typeface. And here certain letters are easier to distinguish. As for mobility, there are multiple ways to interact with the iPhone. For instance, uh, there is voice control. By using voice commands, users can see and interact with the user interface through the names of the items, numbers, or by navigating through a grid. There's also adaptive accessories such as wheelchair attachments. In the next slide, I'll show a GIF of Todd Stabelfeld at his WWDC 2017 keynote. So as you can see, he's using a joystick to um, control his iPhone. Next, let's go into SwiftUI. So what exactly is SwiftUI? It was released in 2019, and it's Apple's relatively new UI framework for developing, <clears throat> for declarative programming. So there's some pros and cons to it. On the pros, there is no auto layout, which can be quite a task to undertake. There's also live preview, so you can see your changes in real time for the most part. And there's built-in accessibility support, which I'll go into details later. On the cons, it's relatively new, so there aren't many questions and answers on Stack Overflow. It only supports iOS 13 and above. And from a developer's perspective, it almost seems like the layout generation is decided for you. So you do give up a bit of control with the UI. Next, I'd like to introduce my personal project that I've been working on and the accessibility concepts that I learned. So this app is mainly for Japanese speakers who are learning English and are around an intermediate level. It's a text-based choose-your-own-adventure game, and there's also Japanese translations available if needed. 
It's meant to be a supplemental resource and not a replacement for textbooks. And I've also been building it to ensure that it's as accessible as possible. And here are some wireframes that I started out with, um, just drawing it out on paper. Okay, so let's go through a demo. So first, uh, you can see I have the play, pause, and stop button at the top. I also have the text that I can scroll and a translation button next and two choices, two button choices. So first I'd like to just show um, uh, playing the narration with the play button. You wake up in your tent. Something doesn't seem right. Okay. You open the and then next I will show more detail in this video uh, where from the perspective of someone with uh, visual impairments, um, we would be using voiceover. Uh, so using Siri, turning on voiceover. And then we can tap on the text so that we can hear it uh, being read aloud. You wake up in your tent. Something okay. doesn't. And then we can also tap on the button that is in Japanese to hear it being read aloud. And we can double tap to make a selection. So let's see the translation. Okay, and then you can also um, three finger swipe to scroll. Move to row one of one. Move to okay, row one of one. Let's go back to the English. Choice one, look in your car. Choice two, look around so the campfire. In this story, uh, it seems we're all alone and uh, a little bit scary. So I think I want to choose look around the campfire. So let's double tap on that. Cho choice two, look around the campfire. Choice two, okay. run towards now your tent. Now let's turn off voiceover and try using voice control uh, from the perspective of someone with limited mobility. So using Siri, we're gonna turn it off, turn voiceover off. And then we're gonna turn on voice control. Okay. Now we can see uh, that uh, there are some numbers that we can uh, we can interact with the UI uh, through these numbers, or we can say show names so we can see the button names. Okay, but as um, for some reason, there was no uh, label for the button in Japanese. So we're gonna switch back to the numbers and I can say tap four and it'll make that selection. So now we see it in Japanese and let's go back to English. And okay, so in this story, we have a choice. One, grab the flashlight or run towards your tent. I think I'm gonna go with choice one, grab the flashlight. So I'll say, I'll choose, I'll say tap choice one. And then we will see the next part of the story. All right, so next, uh, let's go over some of the accessibility modifiers. Uh, this play button uh, is using an SF symbol, but the problem is that uh, with voiceover, it would be read aloud as play, circle, and that's not very helpful. So we can ignore it by using children.ignore. And uh, instead we can set our accessibility label with the text that we want. So for instance, uh, play narration. Next, we have the choice buttons. Here you can see choice, uh, the choice one label uh, is displayed during the voice control part of the demo. However, the actual value that will be read aloud by voiceover changes dynamically here. 
uh, one thing to note is that regardless of the order that you have them written out, it's typically starts with the label value and then hint. And by the way, the hint is uh, for giving more specific directions. As mentioned earlier in the demo, there isn't just one way to interact with the UI using a voice control. Um, in this example, we didn't have a label for the uh, button in Japanese, but we were able to use uh, the numbers to interact with it. This uh, project has taught me how to develop and test for all users and by harnessing iOS's built-in accessibility. And Siri is such a great asset when testing on your iPhone. Lastly, I'd like to, um, uh, I had to learn MVVM architecture and I figured giving a high level overview might be helpful for those who are getting started with Swift UI. So um, you can take a look at this diagram. Uh, the main differences deal with the view and the view model. So the view model handles the business logic. Um, it publishes change and the view observes a change. So in the next slide, I'll go into more detail on the view and view model. In the view, we can refer to the view model through this uh, at state object uh, view model. That's how we can reach in and tap into the view model. And the view model holds intents or functions uh, such as choose story and change language. Uh, lastly, some challenges included learning the various accessibility modifiers, and it takes some time to learn when to use and not to use them. Uh, I ran into some issues with the button that was written in Japanese. Um, it had both the Japanese and English together, but by using children.ignore, I was able to solve the problem. In, the, in terms of future steps, I'm hoping to look into adding open dyslexic font within the app. I also want to research more on mobility. And I plan to look into allowing for multiple languages for voiceover. Lastly, I want to ensure all buttons have labels for voice commands. Uh, here are my sources. And I hope you enjoyed my talk on SwiftUI and Access on the Rights. Thank you for listening.